I believe there's a lot that you need to understand about the ability to discern. I'm going to explain to you just what kind of spirits uh, we distinguish as we are discerning. The word discern would mean to distinguish between spirits. So we know that they are not only one kind of spirits out there. We don't only have human spirits, but we know we have demonic spirits and we also know that we have angelic spirits. And in many cases, we have the spirit of spirits that we also uh, have to discern. Uh, the Holy Spirit and the Bible in the book of First John tells us just how we can discern the Holy Spirit and distinguish him from the spirit of the Antichrist. Uh, and this is by identifying that the Holy Spirit is the only one that can say that Jesus is Lord and the Holy Spirit is the only one that acknowledges that Jesus came in the flesh. And any spirit that does not acknowledge that Jesus came in the flesh is not of God. And this spirit is that spirit of the Antichrist, which has been said that will come into the world and is already in the world even today. I must mention that discerning of spirits goes beyond just distinguishing spirits, but it also goes into uh, identifying the intention of spirits. And I'm going to show you a couple of things from the scriptures. To begin with, we're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 10. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, uh, which is the gift we are focusing on today and we'll have two more gifts to discuss afterward. But the discerning of spirits, as I mentioned earlier, is the ability that the Holy Spirit gives to individuals to be able to distinguish. Now, we do know that as a believer, as a Christian, we must naturally be discerning apart from the gift of uh, discernment. For example, when the Bible does tell us that we can distinguish the Holy Spirit from the spirit of the Antichrist, this is discernment on one level, to discern on the basis of the word of God, to discern on the basis of what is said by the spirit. So what a spirit confesses is very important in us exercising discernment as a as a general spiritual ability that we as Christians uh, need to have. But when we talk about the gift of discerning of spirits, this is a super ability. This is beyond one's natural ability that has been built through exercising one's spiritual muscles. So discerning of spirits would then be a gift that would increase this capacity in a supernatural way in a moment when such a discernment is needed. Man is a spirit. He lives inside a body and has a soul. So when God formed man from the dust of the ground, he breathed the spirit into man and man became a living soul. And the soul became the interface through which he is able to control this vehicle called the body by the spirit. So the spirit of man is the inhabitant of the house, the body, and the interface in order for that spirit to be able to function here in this natural world is the soul. The soul makes us relate to our environment and to other human beings. Uh, the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. Now, your spirit man, who is the real you, if you're watching me, I would like you to just repeat after me in order for this to sink in. My spirit is the real me. I live in a body and I have a soul. So your spirit is the real you. You live in a body and you have a soul. This means that the function of your body is a reflection of your spirit. What your body is able to do is a physical reflection of your spirit's abilities. Because you can walk and you have legs in the body, that tells you that your spirit is mobile. So your spirit may not necessarily move in the same way that your body moves by walking. There could be way more ways that your spirit could travel. But the fact that your body can walk 
is a reflection of what your spirit is able to do. The fact that your body has eyes shows that your spirit can see. The fact that your body has a mouth shows that your spirit is able to communicate. And so your spirit has senses. And these senses would be the original of what a sense would be like. You know, in the natural uh, world, in our bodies, we understand that we have five senses, sight, uh, hearing, taste, touch, and smell. But in the spirit, in your spirit, the senses that you experience in your body would be far much uh, more in terms of their intensity and in terms of their numbers. So you are able to sense in more different ways than you would sense uh, physically. But the physical aspects of your body are spiritual representations, or should I say the sensory aspects of your body are physical representations of what your spirit is able to do. Uh, I'm reminded of a scripture, I'll, I'll just brush over it quickly, that says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God here is describing to us how that our image is made in God's image, right? but it is a reflection of his likeness. It means that everything our bodies are able to do is a reflection of God's spiritual abilities. 